and allow me just to say very welcome to the Young Minds uh, for 2024 information session. This is one of a number of sessions we've had. And so if you have attended one before, there might not be much new information or a lot of new information, but we trust that nevertheless, you will find it um, useful to get to, in terms of information to help you with regards to some of the decisions you need um, to, to make. Um, I want to take this opportunity right at the beginning also to congratulate you. If you are in this room this afternoon and you are a matriculant of 2023, I think at this point in time, it will be very appropriate for the rest of us to give you just a round of applause and congratulate you to say well done yeah. on achieving your national senior certificate. If you are a parent of such a, a matriculant, also congratulations to you because we know that you were writing that matric exam with your young person at the end of 2023. So well done to you as well. You can't believe it. We at the last day of January in 2024, uh, which means it's almost inappropriate to say to say compliments of the season. Nonetheless, I'm going to take that risk and say we wish you all of the best for 2024, and we trust um, that you will have a prosperous year. We trust that all your dreams and all your ideals will come into fruition um, for 2024 as well. So lastly, on behalf of the CEO of the Stellenbosch Business School um, Executive Development, Dr. Chris van der Wiffen, um, my director or line manager, um, Ms. Claire Kelly, um, just very, very welcome as we navigate with you through this next hour or so for this afternoon. Usually, when you are in a physical presence, um, we would normally indicate to you where the bathrooms are. So I'm going to ask you to take a minute to just locate where the nearest bathroom is, um, wherever you are. Um, we, we don't want to have some traffic jam and you try and get to the bathroom as well. Um, we will um, give you opportunity to ask questions, but as my colleagues already indicated in the chat, if you have some questions, please do not hesitate to put them down there. Um, the rest of our team, who is also present here this afternoon, will respond as appropriately. But also at the end of the session, there will be a Q&A um, session where you could ask some of your burning questions. On the screen right now, you have the agenda for this afternoon. I think I have partly done the welcome. I'm still going to introduce you to our team. And then I'm going to talk about um, the program in terms of what it entails and why um, we recommend a young person to do this program. Then our channel director, Claire, will talk to, uh, to the program calendar and some of the other practicalities that we have for 2024. And then we will have some time for, uh, Claire will share some frequently asked questions and some responses that we have to those already. And then at the right at the end, we will open it up. If your question has not your question has not yet been answered, um, there would be an opportunity at the end for you to ask him verbally um, at the end of um, the day. Uh, then maybe just like as a house housekeeping uh, um, consideration, it would be great if um, you if you are not speaking, um, if you could mute your your, your yourself. The reason is simply we know that some of us are at our homes and, you know, it's normal family time. Um, and so sometimes there could be a little bit of noise in the background. So we just respectfully request that you um, do that just to help the process as we continue. I'm not I'm not manning the slide deck. So when you hear me asking someone to move the slide, please bear with us. Um, and as my colleague uh, Chanel has already done. Thank you, Chanel, for moving that slide uh, forward for me. We call ourselves the dream team. Uh, this is the team that um, will support and serve your young person for 2024. In open enrollment, we have our uh, channel director, who is Claire Kelly, right in the center there. Um, to Claire's left, uh, immediate left, I have Charmaine Mitchell, who is our client relations officer. And to the left of Charmaine, I have Samantha Abrahams, who is the program manager. 
Samantha, as the, pro as the program manager, will probably interact with your young people for, for probably 95 up to 99% of her time during 2024. So any communication from an administrative point of view, Samantha will man that. Um, and so you will get to know Samantha in more detail as the year progress as well. To the right of Click Ali, you find myself. Uh, I'm the proposal and design specialist and the name is Kevin Henderson. Um, and then to the right of myself, you will find Amira Lewis and Amira is the program administrator. And up till now, most of you, if you have had any correspondence from us, would have uh, would have communicated with either Charmaine or Amira because they are playing a critical role in the background at the moment, ensuring that your young people get registered if they are interested in attending our program as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the team which we refer to as the dream team. Um, Let's move forward um, in, our, in our slide deck. So let's talk about where we are when we are at Stellenbosch um, Business School. Um, Stellenbosch Business School um, Executive Development in particular is the, is the division or the part of Stellenbosch Business School that your young people will register with if they uh, register with um, or in our program. So as you know, Stellenbosch University, which is situated in Stellenbosch, um, does have... Uh, uh, many, many schools or faculties or departments, etc. So the one school that's quite well known to most people is obviously the medical school, which is also not situated in Stellenbosch. And then we have the business school, uh, which house or hosts both the business school proper, which is the division uh, responsible for our degree programs. And then we are the division, which is responsible for short courses, uh, and we are then known as Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development. The relevance of that is that our programs are quality assured by Stellenbosch Business School. In other words, the value for, for people doing a program with us is that our programs are very practical, but the academic rigor is um, assured by our professors and our colleagues at the business school who is responsible for the MBAs and PhDs and MPhil degrees. At the same time, whilst the business school quality assure our programs, when a candidate is successful in the pro a program that they've done with us and one who would be a program where competence is required, such a participant will receive a certificate from Stellenbosch University. Please, uh, what that means is that we don't have a certificate of attendance, but that we actually, for our programs, for Stellenbosch University to issue such a certificate, there need to be evidence of competence that has been achieved. And I will later in the afternoon alert and avert, sort of refer to that a little bit more to give you an indication of what are the requirements for young people to be certified as competent um, on the Young Minds program. So ladies and gentlemen, the question then is probably, so what, what is the Young Minds program? And so, so we want to look at our program as a career-focused gap year program. So we, when this program was called into being, it was initially just called a gap year program as an attempt to look and help those people uh, who are not so sure yet as what they would like to do. What we've done as the program evolved, uh, the program is now uh, offering some career focus as well as ensuring that this year that young people spend with us will help them in their quest for getting greater direction or clearer direction during the next couple of months. And our program then runs over nine months and it will start on the 12th of March, 2024, uh, and it will run until the 8th of November for 2024. So what is this program all about? So our definition of it is to say it is a structured personal development program um, for young adults or school leavers. And the emphasis is for those who are not sure 
what they want to do with their lives yet. I am a registered clinical psychologist, and in the work that I've done in my life, one of the things that's quite critical is that there is an expectation of 18-year-olds, and that's the structure of our society, of 18-year-olds to know exactly what they want to do with their lives. So as a psychologist, but also as a father of two adult girls now, I've been through that journey <laughs> where your young person, and, and I, I can give you an example, my eldest daughter uh, from grade 10 told me, Dad, I want to be a journalist. And she went to Rhodes University, and after six months, she came home and she said to me, I made a mistake. I don't want to do this program. I think I am in the wrong uh, profession. Thankfully, um, her dad helped her a little bit um, to sort of process all of what was happening. She ended up completing her, her journalist degree, and today she works for a bank, a major bank in South Africa in communication. I, I'm sharing that anecdote because I think there is this expectation with all the pressures that young people are going through to know exactly at the end of grade 12 what they would like to do. We are very mindful that that is not the case for every participant or every young person completing matric. And so our program is then aimed at people like that, who not a case of they don't know what to do, but they, are, they might not be sure yet what it is that they would like to do with the rest of their lives. So having said that, I think it's important then for you to understand that the program then focuses or as, as part of the, the brief that we want to see is that some of our participants want to come on, on our program because they are considering going into an, following an academic degree. So part of what we then offer is to ensure that our program is run on the Stellenbosch University main campus in Stellenbosch. Um, and as I've mentioned, these are the dates. But what we're hoping to achieve and what we're attempting to give them is a similar experience of what it is like to be on a university campus. In other words, in an attempt to help them transition from high school where there was all um, these teachers and parents who are able to tell you when you need to submit what, uh, who will tell you and check on you if you haven't done so. We want to help them to transition um, into understanding what are the responsibilities that is required of uh, a student who wants to follow an academic career or an academic degree um, at university as well. We refer to that as helping these young people developing an internal locus of control, which means at times um, that there will be requirements for them that they need to complete and if they don't do so, there's not always going to be someone who will stand behind them and, and, and sort of uh, uh, force them to do that, even though there will be enough support uh, from the program manager and from a learning process uh, facilitators to guide them as to how you get to do that um, as well. And so therefore, we are very happy to say that we will then continue to run our program um, on our Stellarvos uh, University main campus as well. Having said that, one of the other changes that we've made for this year is to ensure that we run the program in person on campus. Uh, some of you might be aware that we used to run our program as at, after 2020, we ran the program um, as a remote program, um, and we've used a combination of remote and in-person, which was a blended program, uh, right now for 2024, we are happy to say that the program will be run as an in-person program for the entire nine months that the young people will be with us. So the program in its essence, like I've already mentioned, um, uh, is certified by Stellenbosch University. Uh, we pride ourselves that this is the 14th year that we are presenting this program. And over this time, we've had in excess of 1,250 um, participants that completed the program su successfully. Um, we know that sometimes there are young people who have applied to the university for the degree course and they, they might not uh, um, be accepted. And then we're very proud to say that the Stellenbosch University Career Services 
also from time to time recommend, especially for those young people who might still be confused a little bit, to come and do our program to help them um, reach that point where they have a little bit more clarity about what they would like to do. Our program is structured around personal development, uh, and we uh, have a developmental approach and design to the program. In other words, the, what we do is iterative. Over the year, uh, they will develop different aspects of, of their lives. Uh, and, and our focus, I'll talk about the focus now, but there are three major areas um, that we will be focusing on as well. Um, the program is structured in another way that it provides flexibility, whereas our young people will do some, get some academic input, they have to do some application of what they're learning, but in terms of the structure of the program and timing of the days of class, we also create space for them so that they can explore other real world opportunities. So for example, to look at, can I do a holiday job? Can I maybe find a weekend job? Can I go and shadow at other institutions to sort of expose myself to more information so that that can help me in making an informed decision? We have an, an, an enable holistic self discovery for the person and we, like I've mentioned already, insist on real world exploration. One of the things that we like to do for our young people is that we would like them to align their talents and their interests and find them and see how they can synergize that with the opportunities that might be presented um, during the exploration of this year. I've already mentioned about the free time, free time for meaningful activities but we do expect ownership and accountability of our young people. Um, it's very tough to say this because we know they transitioning still, but there is a process of them having to learn to take more ownership and accountability. And hence I've mentioned the term, um, our aim is to develop a greater sense of an internal locus of control so that they can act as responsible citizens in our country as well. So these are some of the requirements, but we offer support and the support is offered in terms of um, our learning process facilitator. Um, we have offer guidance. Uh, we have also um, coaching sessions and there's also a safety net of our faculty, our learning process facilitators, and then also the program manager and some of the team that you've met at the beginning of the introduction when I welcomed you all to our session. So that is what the program entailed. I did say that the program aims to create or help people to create a sense of direction and meaning. Um, and so when I say that, we then said, okay, we want to have it structured, focuses on personal development. Um, it's, a, it's about getting to know yourself, which speaks to the issue of uh, developing a greater sense of self-awareness. It's about exploring the real world of work, um, and it's about matching their talents with their opportunities. And obviously, young people don't because they don't know themselves very well. They therefore are also not always aware of, around what are their strengths, what are their talents, um, and how can they link those talents to spot and explore um, the opportunities that will be presented. So that's the aim of the program. Important to say that this is a certificate from Stellenbosch University that they will get, um, even though this program does not lead or is not a formal qualification. In other words, it's not something to the equivalent of a matric certificate or the equivalent of a degree, but it's a certificate of completion with competence that they will receive from Stellenbosch University. Thank you, Chanel. So the three areas that we focus the program on is the area of entrepreneurial thinking, the area of business management, and then the area of personal mastery. So I've mentioned earlier on that we, we believe that these are the areas that will help us to develop um, young people holistically. And as part of our journey, we follow a dual pathway of teaching. 
which is we will have theory which will be applied in practice. So in any given week of class, there will be academic input or class input, knowledge and content. But at the same time, there are, there are some practical applications um, that they will utilize in terms of how, how does this theory work within practice. And because of the three different areas, to keep it holistic, we therefore structure the program in such a way that they will, in any given week, they will have input on all three of the areas indicated on, um, on the screen, which is entrepreneurial thinking, business management, as well as personal master. Thank you, Chanel. So what we're hoping to achieve, that if there's a focus on the art of creating a life of fulfillment, there's a focus of art of creating value and, and profit, but also we're looking at the art of creating opportunities. We then see that a person who has developed those three areas come out as an empowered individual with a greater sense of vision, uh, a strong uh, or high internal locus of control, a self-confident person with some entrepreneurial acumen as well as business acumen, but most importantly, a person who knows how to live a balanced lifestyle. And like I said earlier on, all of this learning will be integrated uh, as, as the experience and it will be facilitated by very experienced faculty members as well. I've already mentioned around um, the classroom driven frame of, frame of references that we will do, the application of self-organized projects. But what the, the issue that I want to highlight here for you, I've mentioned the term learning process facilitators. So when we look at that, the, uh, the learning process that will happen within our classrooms, um, that that learning process, even though there's an experienced faculty, will be supported by the learning process facilitator, who will be the part and parcel of every class that our participants are going through. And they, that their role is to help these participants to look at how does these different modules, how do these different theories integrate um, with one another. And in addition to that, each of our participants will get five coaching sessions. So we will employ five uh, or some life coaches who will ensure that each participant go through five coaching sessions. Again, with the emphasis on coaching coming from the, the request, uh, the pursuit of the applicant or the participant, rather than the coach chasing after the young people. We will structure it for them. We will ensure that the time is there for them to get through their coaching, but it's very critical that they need to complete the five sessions of individual coaching with a qualified coach who will help them to journey through all of what they're going through as well. Thank you, Chanel. Uh, I'm giving you here just a, a, a sense of what um, the, the topics are that will be discussed um, in these three learning areas or the three themes that we're looking at. Um, we, we kick off normally with thinking and paradigms. Um, I often tell young people that um, if you ever wondered about the importance of thinking, um, you can just look at the, the kind of the quality of the decisions that they have been making. And all of us know that if you make a bad decision, the first question people ask you is, what were you thinking? So in light of that, that is why we believe that we need to help our young people to, to become um, and enhance the quality of their thinking um, because the quality of their thinking will influence the quality of their decisions. And we know that life is all about a number of and a series of decisions that all of us need to make at some point. Then we look at neural leadership, in other words, looking at um, how you can maximize your brain uh, and how the brain works. Uh, we're looking at emotional intelligence. Uh, they will be getting some, uh, learn how to, to do some uh, great presentations. We focus on career management and career exploration, focus on self-leadership, and at the all of this culminates so that they can develop iteratively over the nine months, they develop a life plan that they have to present um, at the end of the year to the learning process 
facilitator. With regards to the entrepreneurial mindset, uh, we, we developed some understanding and knowledge around how this entrepreneurial process works. We look at innovation and strategic analysis, how to conduct the strategic analysis. We look at business simulation, how to generate ideas. And at the end of the year, they um, will work towards completing a business plan within the context of a syndicate group or a group project, uh, which we've seen can sometimes prove a challenge for young people because they don't know, they don't have those skill sets yet um, to understand how do I influence my peers at my level. And that's part of why we simulate that within the group work, which will culminate in the business plan. By the way, the business plan, they then present to a panel um, where they will be evaluated on the idea, um, the, the implementability of the idea, et cetera, to help them to see what is required. In addition to supporting through that, through that during this year, we will invite the speakers to come and help them to understand what are the requirements in the business plan. What is it that the bank will look at if the bank wants to give you a loan or considering a loan? So these are all aspects that they will be exposed to in order to help them to develop a program or, or a, a document um, like that. And then lastly, in the area of business acumen, um, they will look at, at the economy, understanding the, the modern economy, and they will explore marketing, uh, and they will look at operations in the world of work as it is now. They will look at the issue of how do we manage people from a human resources perspective. And then ultimately, they also need to understand the value of managing finances. And so financial management is then also a critical part of uh, the program. Thank you, Chanel. Now, I, I did say that part of the program is actually to get the people to enhance, to grow their sense of self, but at the same time to work at these different areas as well. What you see on the screen is something that might be very familiar to um, a lot of us as, as adults, which is called the Johari window. And all I wanna say about the slide is, there's obviously some stuff that young people know about themselves by now, and there are some stuff that other people know about them as well. And so what we would like to, to help them to develop over the year is to increase that public side. In other words, so that the qualities that they know about themselves are also known uh, by, pe by people who, who they know. Um, so others will also know those qualities that they know about themselves. Because as you can see, sometimes there are some stuff that we don't know about ourselves and we need a bit of feedback because other people can see that. But other times there are stuff that other people don't know about us. Uh, we know uh, that about us. Um, and so we would like to decrease the private side, the blind side and the hidden potential and basically increase the public side um, for our young people. So the journey over the nine months is a journey of that where they grow, but at the same time, become more knowledgeable, discover more about themselves. And that discovery would happen through their own explorations, but at the same time, the discovery will happen through the feedback that they will receive, not only from their peers, but also from faculty, from the learning process facilitators, as well as from their coaches. So that's the ultimate goal that we would like to achieve. Um, in terms of the career planning, this is the kind of canvas um, they're going to uh, work through. Uh, maybe just to say, all of our young people at this age, they want to do something which will make them a lot of money. Not that there's anything wrong with money, uh, but what we're hoping for them is to see how when they do something that they thoroughly enjoy, which, which align with their talents, their gifts, and which align with what is the gap in the market, um, that, that's when they will be able to live a happy, fulfilled life as well. And so this career planning canvas will be the canvas they will be using in the exploration um, of what it is they would like to look at as a future career for themselves. As Chanel moves the slide on, I maybe just want to share this anecdote. My, my daughter that I referred to earlier on came to me one year. She was working as a journalist. And she said to me, 
that, you know, I'm so happy in my job. Uh, but if I did what you suggested I must do, which was when she was at high school, I was asking her to consider a career maybe in the medical field. And she said, if I was a doctor now, I would have been sorted out financially. I said to her, my child, that sounds to me like you are happy in your work, but you're not happy with your salary. She said, yes, that's the case. I said, I'll tell you what you do. Take your CV, take it to a recruitment agent, tell the agent exactly what kind of job you're looking for. I said, but what you must do is please don't resign. So then you tell the agent uh, or get someone to professionally design your CV so that it's one of the best CVs around. And I said, then you wait. Two months later, she came back and she said to me, Dad, I haven't heard anything yet. I said, well, my child, it means one of two things. One, it's either what you have to offer, the world of journalism is not looking for that. Because if you what you have to offer, the world is looking for, you would have had an offer. I said, or secondly, it could be maybe what you're asking in return for your skill set, the world is not prepared to pay that. Now I said, well, we know it can't be the latter because you would have at least had an offer at a lower offering, a lower price, um, if if they were interested in your skill set, if that was what the world of journalism needed. She said, yeah, but Dad, what, what do I do now? I said, you have to explore and find out. So what's the gap in journalism? And believe you me, she came back and she told me, Dad, I know what it is. I said, what? She says, financial journalism. I said, what are you going to do? She said, well, I'm going to enter for a course. And she entered for a course at um, Wits University, a one-year course in financial journalism. And before she was done with her course, her own company um, offered her a promotion. Six months into a new job, a very big um, um, media company headhunted her. And at, that's that place where our young people begin to realize as one thing to offer something just because you enjoy it. But is what you're offering what the world needs or what the world is prepared to pay for? And out of that, her career just took off. And I think that's what we're trying to achieve with our Young Minds program as well. It's not only to say, this looks like a good idea. Let's interrogate that. Let's interrogate it from the perspective of, is that what the world needs? Is, is that what the world, is that the kind of the price that the world is prepared to pay for that as well? So in summary, in summary, what you see are all the modules that I've already referred to. And I'm saying that they will go through all of that and all of that information will inform their life plan, which they will do at the end of the year as a presentation that will inform the business plan that they will come up with that they will submit as a document, but also present to a panel. And after that, if they are successful in all of what they had to do, they've submitted all of it, they have passed all of it, they will cert be certified by receiving a certificate from Stellenbosch University at the certificate um, ceremony at the end of the year. Thank you, Chanel. Now, to help them in terms of those modules, to help them to become successful, there's a number of requirements. First of all, right at the beginning of the year, they will do a, an assessment, which is called the Strength Finder Assessment. And the purpose of that is for them to have an almost an empirical way of determining what is it that I'm good at? And that will begin to form the basis for the coaching sessions, but also they will be debriefed around the assessment and the report that they will receive with regard to their strengths. And then once they know that, that's a natural strength that they bring. And so in coaching and throughout the year, they will all the time go back to, what am I developing? What am I learning? that informs and reinforces the strength that I have so that that can lead to greater effectiveness in my life. However, since I've said earlier on that they need to just demonstrate competence, 
Now, one of the ways that we do that is to ask them to complete uh, some individual assignments. But at the same time, for this year, we're also introducing an examination uh, for our students as well. So there will be a number of individual assignments as well as an exam that they have to successfully complete. In addition to that, they need to complete the job shadowing, uh, especially the one within the, uh, the, the NPO that they're going to do. And there will be an activity that they will have to complete, which is they have to do a, a strategic analysis of the NPO, which they will then submit and will be graded uh, for them for a mark as well. And then lastly, the requirement for them to be able to certify is then that they will have to complete all five of their coaching sessions. Um, and if they do, if they are successful in all of that, they've completed the life plan, they've completed the business plan successfully, um, they will be able to uh, complete the year academically as a successful candidate or participant on the Young Minds program. Thank you, Chanel. So um, by now you're probably tired of my voice. So let me summarize. Um, our program therefore will be supported uh, by the learning process facilitator as well as the coaches. Like I've mentioned, they need to, to need to at least complete the five coaching sessions. Just so by the way, that is the minimum of the, the minimum number of coaching sessions. Um, that they have to do that. They can do more. Um, unfortunately, if they go more, then they would need to, um, to to pay for that separately. But the minimum number of coaching sessions is that they must complete the five sessions that is already worked out for them. They have to complete 20 unnotional hours of NGO or NPO work in which they will complete that strategic analysis that I was referring to. They have to pass all the assignments and the exam with a minimum mark of 50% and that attendance is compulsory. I do know that it's not always possible for people to attend all the time because some of our young people we know will be writing, uh, uh, rewriting some of their matric subjects, um, which will make it difficult for them to attend because you can only be in one place at, at, the, uh, at, at the time, you can't be in two places. And so we say that attendance is compulsory, but we expect when, when students have difficulty to attend, that they communicate with us so that there's clear understanding of why it wasn't possible for them um, to attend. In terms of the application and for admissions, we, expect, we require 55% uh, for grade 12. Uh, so the grade 12 file, final results are out. Uh, the applications are currently open and we will close all our applications on the 21st of February. That just so that we can finalize the class of 2024. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, that's my time for now. I want to hand over to our director, Claire Sissing, or excuse me, Claire Kelly, who will take us further for the afternoon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin, and thanks for for all of that, I really appreciate it. And uh, good evening uh, to the moms and dads, and uh, as Kevin has said, to the young people. Um, and again, congratulations that you have completed uh, your final year of high school. Um, I'm just quickly going to be taking you through the schedule. Um, I think what's most important is the parent orientation session. Um, that's for the 6th of March um, at half past four to half past five. And we're going to host that uh, via the Zoom platform um, remotely um, as well. Then exciting as we hit off semester one, um, we will be having the orientation week um, in Stellenbosch on our main campus um, from the 12th to the 15th of March. And then we'll go right through um, and then start that semester from the 18th of March and have a short recess between the 29th and the 7th of April, where we will finish again on the, on the 5th of June. We then have an exam week that is running from the 18th to 21st of June, where we will then end off our first semester. Um, we will then start our second semester um, on the 22nd of July uh, to the 4th of September, and then have another recess from the 7th to the 15th of September, and then into our last period from the 16th of September to the 4th of October. 
Um, we will then finish off from the 11th of October and eventually the 8th of November. And then in December, we will then have our certificate ceremony um, for those that graduate from the Young Minds program. There was quite a few uh, questions in the past and in the last uh, couple of months uh, that many have asked. So we've decided to put a slide together uh, with frequently asked questions. Um, yes, uh, no specific grade 12 subjects are required to qualify for the Young Minds program. There is a minimum average of 55% for final grade 12 results. Those are out. So if you do apply, you would need to apply with your final matric certificate. Uh, attendance of all activities and cl classes are compulsory. Um, exactly what Kevin has said. That's quite important. Um, the program will be taking place on Stellenbosch University campus, as, as also mentioned. Uh, and it, as Kevin has also mentioned, there's no credit exemption towards any university or undergraduate degrees should you complete the Young Minds program. The fees for 2024 is 58,100, excluding that. Uh, and we do have a great Capitec opportunity available should you uh, require um, some funds. And we have, we'll be putting that in our chat should you uh, would like to apply for, for Capitec funding. And just lastly, we just want to indicate what is not included in these fees. It would be any form of travel, any private accommodation, your laptop device or any software, Wi-Fi and data. And roughly just data requirements that would be needed is about 300 remote learning hours minimum um, for doing the program as well. All right. Um, as an exactly, I'm going to hand back to Kevin. And should there be any more questions, you're more than welcome to to ask us as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Claire. Um, ladies and gentlemen, so the, that information that Claire shared was just around how to share, and that's just a broad stroke. So obviously, our participants, when they arrive uh, during orientation week, they will get all the final detail of. We, which venue they need to go to for their classes. Um, we will have the orientation um, at uh, the, the Nielsi um, when we start. And um, we're looking forward to welcoming you, your young people to, to us, um, uh, to the program as well. Claire also indicated, as uh, just to highlight that, that before we kick the program off, we will have another orientation session just for parents, just in terms of how, how do we, as as us as the university and you as the parents, how are we collaborating to support our young people through this journey as well? So at this point in time, if you have any further questions, we're going to give an opportunity for that right now. But on the screen, you will also find um, the uh, the detail of our client liaison person, Charmaine Mitchell. That's her telephone number. Um, that's the contact email address where you can contact um, Charmaine as well. And um, so if you have any queries and questions, please feel free to raise your hand and, and um, ask your question. Um, I see there's a question around the days. So we're planning to have the three days, our first three days of the week. Um, we have had many different ways of having that. But uh, this year we've decided to go with Monday to Wednesday because we know student life is a very busy life, especially on a Wednesday evening. And um, so hence the decision to, to rather ensure that we have better class attendance on the days that might be after a busy student night. So uh, our classes will run from Monday to Wednesday. Okay, I'm checking, I'm keeping my eye here. Um, accommodation, can I, Samantha, if you are here, do you mind just quickly speaking to that? Hi, Kevin. Thank mm -hmm. you. We do not provide um, accommodation for students, but you can um, approach the Nielsen properties um, in the Nielsen building with your students gather. And you can also approach academia, um, which um, obviously receives external students. 
So the you can actually, be, if you send me your email, then I can send you the frequently asked questions with that um, details in it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I saw the question around uh, clusters. So um, students uh, will, our participants will be uh, form part of the private students organization. During orientation, We the private students organization will come and address the students and to inform them how they become part of that and which um, sort of clusters they are able to join. So that information will be given to the students as well. Maybe just to mention, so they will be able to participate in that, but they will not be able to, to represent Stellenbosch University in the field of sport as, as a representative of Stellenbosch University. And then the other question I saw there was around the student cards. Um, that detail will also be provided to the participants when they uh, during orientation where to go um, to get their their student card if they if they wish to have one um, as well. Okay. Good. Um, uh, Jordan, um, yes. You, the, when you have joined Stellenbosch University, you kind of have your student number for life. <laughs> so I, I, I speak under correction and colleagues correct me if I'm wrong here, but I would assume that that would be the case. If you are currently a registered student, you probably will have the same student number and you can use your, your same student card, but you will have to activate that card for 2024. Um, as as sort of the sort of card can be active again now. Good. And and enjoy. I see your your message. Um, I think um, I think it's important that we we will sort of direct you, guide you as to where you can explore as, as well. Um, but um, it's sometimes also useful just to context uh, um, the university in terms of if they have any other recommendations where people can go. Most of our students source uh, um, privately in terms of what is available in, um, in Stellenbosch. Yeah. Grant, um, so we, in the past, we've had only one venue. Uh, this year, we're moving towards having many, uh, not many, but different venues. But the majority of the classes will be in the Fear Fierce Hall within the Nielsen. Um, so that's where the majority of the classes will be. Um, and, uh, I think it was Holly um, saying that, um, unfortunately, that's not something that's in our control. You're asking if they are in Stellenbosch because um, they won't be able, they, they won't be a record until we have registered them. Um, the, there won't be a record for them. So unfortunately, we, won't, um, uh, we, we can't arrange um, for that yet. Claire, maybe there's a question for you. How many students do you accept for this year? <laughs> well, I think the max we're hoping to go 120, 130 this year. Um, there are a lot of applications at the moment, so we are still um, going through that. So if you really, really want to be on the program, I would suggest that you get your application in by Friday. Um, we have our... Um, application officer on on the call at the moment, and she's working around the clock with those applications. Um, it uh, unfortunately it comes on a first uh, um, first come first serve basis uh, at the moment, but there is definitely a cutoff between one twenty and one thirty for this year. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Um, I'm just uh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to scroll and see all the questions, so it's not always possible. If I miss it, just just uh, forgive me. It's not like I'm ignoring um, your question. Kevin, just maybe a... the one on time, um, class times. Maybe we just want to address that one. Okay. Uh, Samantha has responded. The class time oh, okay. will run from 8.30 in the morning till 
in the afternoon. Apologies. Yeah. Okay. Um, Em is asking if the recordings will be made available. Uh, yes, so we will be sending out a, a mail. You will be receiving something uh, uh, with all the information we've just spoken about, as well as a recording from Shemaine Mitchell, um, uh, probably uh, early tomorrow morning. Please reach out actually to Shemaine if there's any other further information you do need. Then maybe there, there was a question around, is it only open for matriculants? So we do have, um, students who have studied at Stellenbosch University and um, go through what my daughter used to go through with. This is not what I want to do. Um, and uh, their parents then asked them to come and do a, a course like that. So we, we do have, in fact, last year, we've had students who were already in third year and had maybe one subject that they still had to do. And they felt instead of just doing that, they want to enroll for the university. What, what we, however, want to uh, look at is the age of, of, of students like that. So, um, and, and, it's, and it's a definition of what is regarded as young. Um, and, and, and that's open for interpretation. If you ask me at 61, I'm young. Um, but I can guarantee you, none of the participants in our young minds would like to have me as a classmate. Um, the, the reality is, yes, there is a cutoff in terms of age. Um, and then obviously, if a person has worked for a number of years already, the, the, the lived experiences of our young people, as opposed to a person who's been in the work environment for five years or more, is very, very different. And it could often be a, like a misalignment in terms of the quality of conversation uh, to the benefit of both parties. So we do have a, a, a cutoff there as well. Um, but if it's a person who was written matric two years ago, that, that person can apply and we can still look, provided that they have, they have, they're meeting the requirements in terms of the, 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 the average for, for matric. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, just to Angela, uh, Angela, I see you've asked a question and you're asking that you're looking at 2025. So yes, it will always be about three days per week that we will have class, um, but we can't guarantee that it will be like the same days next year. Um, so every year we look at what worked, what didn't work, and it might actually be next year. So if, if next year we say, well, from our experience this year and from the feedback from our customers, they, they prefer rather um, four days a week than three days a week or, or every alternate day than like one day. We, we might take that into consideration. Um, but up till now, um, we've always had three days a week. Uh, in the past, we've just split it up as alternate days. This year, we, this will be the first time that we will go with three days in succession. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you. Um, up, 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 up. Okay. Seems like I have, um, oh, there's another one. Yeah, that's just on the fees, Kevin. Um, so yes, okay. um, if I could just respond to that, the full fees would need to be paid uh, prior to the commencement of the program. Okay. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, I think um, on that note, um, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for the questions that you've been posing. And we hope that the session this afternoon um, provided more information, helping you and your young person um, to, to make a more or a better informed decision as well. And as I started out this afternoon, I want to wish you all of the best for 2024. And we, we are hoping that we will see you in our parent orientation, uh, if you are a parent, or that uh, we will see you in our orientation, during our orientation week um, for Young Minds, which will start on the 12th of March. All the best. Thank you so much for your time.